What's going on there, guys? We back with another one. And today, we got to talk about some of the comments Stephen A. Smith said in regards to Pat McAfee. And that's always been a question about how Stephen A. felt when Pat McAfee came over to ESPN with his content. The money that they're paying Pat McAfee, you see how much they're using Stephen A. Smith as a worker in the business world. Whereas, you know, with Pat McAfee, they're acquiring the rights to stream his content because you can see it streaming simultaneously on YouTube when it's airing live, right? So Pat McAfee owns his content. Stephen A. Smith, we've seen a lot of other people on television run to YouTube and start their own channels. And, you know, I feel like a lot of these guys were behind the eight ball a little bit because I thought they could have taken advantage of, of the wave you know when it first started Stephen A. Smith would be much larger had he done this uh, a few years ago because ESPN needed him he was carrying that network and he talks about being number one again but he's catching a little bit of flack for using Pat McAfee's race and saying that uh, Pat McAfee can come in with a tank top and all that basically because he's white he doesn't have to be politically correct with anything he says where Stephen A. Smith says, you know, I have to be that way because I'm black. On one hand, you know, obviously that race dynamic is there in the workplace, you know, at all times. For Pat McAfee, he has something like ESPN is asking him his terms and it has to be something he likes to agree to let them stream it. You see what I'm saying? So it's a different, whole different dynamic there. We're going to listen to Stephen A.'s comments. Let's check it out. You're competing with the guys around you. And so ESPN comes in, you talked about 2 billion views. You talked about being the man number one for 12 years. And you see ESPN making a pivot to McAfee. Obviously great for the network. Sure. How do you, in your mindset, view a guy like McAfee who is extremely good at his job in a lot of ways is changing the course of mainstream media and all those things <laughs> from a competitive standpoint and also as a, as a partner? I am an aberration in this regard. <clears throat> I love Pat McAfee. He's a man. Love him to death. Love him to death. I love his swag. I love the fact that he's an honest brother. He don't give a shit. Let me let you know exactly where he stands. That's my kind of dude. That works for me. Now, is he as polished politically as me? Nope. Because he has no desire to be, number one. And number two, if we're being honest, he's white and I'm black. He didn't have to be. I had to be. So I get all of that. And I'm not knocking him for it. I get it. Pat McAfee is a sensational talent and it would be stupid for me not to root for him because he's one of the pioneers in this business just like bill simmons is just like joe rogan is and others what they have done for themselves in the digital stratosphere speaks for itself i'm new to this i'm a baby I got, I'm approaching 550,000 subscribers in 10, 10 and a half months. People see me, oh my God, you're averaging over 2,000 subscribers a day. And look at the views per episode. It's just climbing and climbing. And look at the consistency, the growth, especially my guy Bailey, the social media guru. I mean, he's, trying to, he's painting this beautiful picture every day. I'm looking at the fact that my numbers pale in comparison to those folks who have been there and have like a four, five, seven, eight year head start on me. Why? Because I'm looking at who's number one and why. OK, but in the same breath, don't get it twisted. I love Pat. Pat knows that I'm rooting for him. I help him any way I can help him. But we know who number one in linear television is. You know, no backseat. He's been number one for 12 years. People come, people go. People come, people stay. But there's a top perch. Now, you could take it away, knock on wood. It could be next year. It could be next week. It could be two years, five years from now, whatever. But since 2012, it's been me with Skip Bayless, with Adam, with Max Kellerman, with Adam, with a potpourri of contributors. It don't matter. I come to win. And when it comes to linear television, that's exactly what the fuck I have done. And so my attitude is, as long as I'm doing it, I'm going to continue to win. McAfee or no McAfee. Get up or no get up. It don't matter who it is. FS1, Comcast, whatever. You come for me, I'm coming for you. I'm here to win. Digital is different because I'm a baby. I'm crawling. I'm an infant. You understand what I'm saying? I ain't even learned how to walk yet. You understand what I'm saying? Let alone run and sprint. But... Once I get to that point, I'm going to come for folks then too. So listen to Stephen A. Smith's take 
You know, I, I got a hold of this because I've seen so many people reacting to him saying that. And when I heard the totality of what he said, and even beyond that, because I couldn't get the whole clip, obviously, but um, beyond that, Stephen A. was talking about helping black and white journalists is coming up and um, other things like that, saying he wants to be number one, obviously, which he said he reached in linear television, but he wants to do it in digital, you know, and, and on YouTube and, you know, his podcast and different things like that, that he owns. He, he wants to be number one in that capacity, which, you know, is within his right. Now, as far as the portion about Pat McAfee and him being white is the reason that he doesn't have to be politically correct. I'm not going to take that away from Stephen A. Smith. What I would submit to Stephen A. Smith, like he says often on his show, what I would submit to you. Um, Pat McAfee has something that he was already bringing to the table, right? And the terms have to work. And this is the way it was presented prior to him coming over to ESPN, right? So when he walks in there with his tank top, he's, you know, just standing up, leaning over uh, the podium and talking or o over his desk and talking and he's presenting it that way it's the way that it's blew up now i know him and espn they had some little issues as far as like uh the particulars specifically about his language and his cursing and stuff like that people were trying to get him to speak differently and he's like no this is how I present it. Maybe y'all can bleep it out on your network, but I'm not going out the way to change the presentation. And that's some of the power that you do have when you already have your ship rolling. Again, they have to meet his terms more than they have more than he has to meet theirs. And that's the place you want to be in. That's why he was able to call out one of the big wigs up there. But they can't get rid of him on that time slot because it's is successful it's got people viewing espn at that time of day i can't remember what used to come on after first take it used to be sports center it's like a bunch of hours of sports center right something like that and pat mcafee has brought you know they they really what they're doing now is espn is looking at content creators around the globe and they want some of that audience that you have because your audience that's viewing you is taken away from people that's viewing them. So they want to kind of partner with you and bring your audience in in addition to the audience they already have. And Pat McAfee, you know, he was getting those exclusives with Aaron Rodgers and you get to see players talk to him with a comfortability that they haven't talked to others with. Now, Shannon Sharp, he's ascending right now. Um, so his presence on ESPN First Take is very much felt, um, you know, and Shannon, he, he's getting to the place, you know, now, especially with the way the nightcap is doing. I don't know if ESPN is going to be able to do anything with that. Is nightcap with the volume like Club Shay Shay? I'm not sure. But if it's not, you know, you better watch out for some of these, uh, you know, satellite cable shows or whatever, because telling you shannon sharp is taking off man and um stephen a smith he he's like he's doing well on youtube but you could tell he's still trying to find you know his lane after seeing what they gave pat mcafee it's like why am i working for this you know this little 10 11 million a year and i say little that's big to a lot of people but for his workload it it is underpaid for what he's done for that network i'm just looking at what he's putting out and what everybody else is getting you see what and, and not even just pat mcafee but if you look at like what troy aikman is getting from espn you look at some of those people and you look at what Stephen a makes for all the jobs that he does yeah it's a bit much you know so um but I didn't take too much exception with what Stephen A. Smith said. I know people were mad about that black and white part. And I want to know your thoughts on that, guys. Let me know in the comment section what do you think. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Till next time. Peace.